trembling feet, shaking hands, accelerated heart rate, panic and anxiety or anxiety. All of you would have experienced these at the very thought of a police officer right in front of your eyes. I'm not sure about you, but I experienced each one of them when the organization asked me to moderate the event with Sri Abhyananji. But as I slowly started reading his book, I realized that my perception is only going to be proven as an exception and exceptions do exist. Just as the introduction was done, Abhyananji is a man of great ideas and techniques and his life unfolds very well right in front of your eyes as you go through this beautiful book that we are going to review today that's called Unbounded by Abhyananji. I suggest that each one of you after this event, please take this legacy forward of this wonderful man through his pages. That will be the best reward that you can give it to him. Thank you so much. Now, to start with, I'm supposed to be reviewing the entire book. Since I've read it all over, there's one thing that I would like to start with. You were, sir, a man of physics. And you moved on to become a man of law. How did this, you know, thought process at least come to you in the first place that you could avail the laws of physics in order to, or use it as a bigger tool to solve all the crimes that unfolded right in front of your eyes? It's a very interesting question to begin with. Uh, both of them, that is physics and police, have a common thing. That is law. There are laws of physics and there are laws for police. The police is an organization which is created in the womb of law and works ever thereafter within the bounds of law. So I found that working with physics was to learn the law and apply it to problems of physics. Here also, I found the same concept helping me to understand the laws of legislature and apply it to the situations that I faced as a policeman, be it law and order or crime or anything which a policeman normally faces. And I found that each one helped the other supplement the process. So, you mean to say that laws of physics also govern laws of life? Laws of physics are laws of life. Mm -hmm. There are other issues also, but again, the laws will exist. Right. For example, if you talk of law, I mean, you talk of life, then you talk about physics also. For example, if you talk of life, you talk about the organelle that creates and provides power to life, that is the mitochondria. Correct. And mitochondria, when you look at it very closely, you find physics behind it. It's a battery. Hmm. And if, Full a of ba energy. if you understand why a battery works, the electromotive force behind it, you right. understand the electron transport chain. If you understand that, you see, Ari, ito, this is a battery. Yeah. So, visualization is what physics helps you with okay. and when you apply it to policing, mm -hmm. you the visualization part of it helps you again. Right. You <laughs> see a situation, uh, the first thing, prologue, when you mm -hmm. read that, I have given you an instance, a very, very difficult law and order situation where I am left alone, 10,000 people all mad. Mm -hmm. They are shouting, DM ko phansi do, SP ko phansi do, and I am all alone. Mm. Standing there with no weapon, no policeman. Correct. And I apply my technique and all through those five hours when I was handling that crowd, very violent. Mm. I was applying the visual effect of 
a forced harmonic oscillator, which is a physics phenomenon. And I was modeling my, exp my handling of the situation along that line. Yeah. I mentioned mm. that there as a I had a question on that forced harmonic forced oscillator, harmonic but you already spoke about it. So, so I think because it's the visualization part mm. of it, which made it make the thing which I was trying to drive at was, can I make this group forget its history from where it started and right. fall in with my line? Mm. And I made them fall into my line mm. and I won my battle in that law and order situation without any force, without any lati, without any weapon and they fell into my Excellent, line. excellent. I had already uh, framed up a question for this but since he's already done it, um, I think all of you would also agree that this particular aspect of application of physics into life is something that you know can put most of our wrongs into rights. I think all of you would be able to understand it better also. Now the next question is, sir, you were in a state of Bihar, a state that was defined by complete lawlessness, right? So the intricacies of crime were also very different from other states. How did you manage to unbound the usual norms of strictness and bring about the innovation and the human attitude to these crimes or to tackle these crimes? Uh let me begin with a premise. I have my own take on how a law and order situation is handled. It's not because you've got powers to do this or you've got powers to do that. You have powers to impose 144. It's right. not because you have weapons in your hand. It's not because you have lattes in your hand or a tear gas shell and you can fire them. You, all these powers are there. Right. Use them all. Mm -hmm. And people have used them. It keeps coming up again and again, the situation. Okay. I have, all through my 37 years, I have analyzed most of these incidents and the conclusion that I have come to is like this. I am the SP of a district and everyone has seen SPs. Okay. You stay in a house, mm -hmm. you stay in your office and you, whenever there is a law and order situation, you go there and handle it. Mm -hmm. Now, I take it that when I go to a law and order situation at say X point in Nagpur or Y point in Patna, mm -hmm. I am going to the place of the locals of that area. Right. So, I am in their house. Mm -hmm. I am their Atithi. Correct. When they have a problem, they come to you, mm -hmm. to your house, to your office. Now, they are your Atithi. If you don't behave with them properly, they will not behave with you properly. That's true. And mm -hmm. give them any law, give them any process, give mm -hmm. them anywhere with all. The reciprocation will be effected. Mm -hmm. Like somebody who is in pain and he comes to you when you are the SP of a place and you say, Bhago yaan se. Mm -hmm. Be prepared to get the same response when you go there to his house handling a law and order situation. Absolutely. Right. Um, so we see a lot of youngsters here. I would like to ask you, uh, what does the term responsibility actually mean to you? You mean, you know, like, is it just responding to a situation or, you know, you have a, a situation and then you develop uh, an attitude towards it and think about it, whether you need to answer it or not, and then go about it? How would you explain responsibility to the younger generation? Because they seem to shirk away from responsibilities more often now. For me, responsibility is to the people I serve. Right. As a policeman. Responsibility to the people. I am posted as SP of a place. Then I am serving the people of that place. Hmm. If the people who are aggrieved are not happy with the way I am doing it, then I am not being responsible. Okay. No matter what my seniors think about me, 
no matter what my polit political uh, persons in power think of me. I am responsible to the feelings of the people. He is the victim. It's like a doctor. If the mm -hmm. patient doesn't feel nice about your treatment, right. then you are no good. Right. So, in case, I mean, like, how do you explain it to the kids? I mean, like, why should they be, you know, like, understand the correct meaning of responsibility? They are responsible, today's, yeah. they are responsible for themselves. Yeah. It's too early for them to be responsible for something else. Yeah. You have to develop yourself. So, start being responsible to yourself. It's only when you grow up and become strong that you can have take up responsibility for others like their family, like your parents. Right now, you are responsible for yourself. Try and develop your strength. Thank you, sir. So, can you narrate any of the incident where you can, you know, in brief at least, uh, where you would have felt that truth and fearlessness, of course, you've reflected it in all your activities, but can you give them an example, a small one, where you can show that fearlessness and truth are collaterals? Fearlessness can go to, and? Uh, fearlessness and truth. Truth. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm going to an area which is infested with so-called Naxals. You must have heard of Naxals. Now, they'll instill a fear in every senior police officer. They'll say, Sir, aise mat jaiye vaan. Dar lagega. Firing ho ja sakti hai. You can get killed. Now, if I don't do that, for example, I, I've given that example here. It's a district called Aurangabad. There is one in Maharashtra. There is another in Bihar also, which was Naxal affected. I got an information saying, Dasta unko kehte hain. Yaha bhi there is one district which is affected. So, Dasta move kar raha hai and it will reach a particular place. So, I pushed in my men and I was at the periphery trying to support them if the necessity comes and get more force for them. I went there and spent the whole night. Next morning the encounter took place. I was a part of that encounter and I was with only one constable who was having a weapon. But that is because I was applying my mind to the situation where even one weapon was good enough for me. And when the firing took place, it went on for hours. There was this incident of encounter on both sides. We had to fire, the other group also fired. My men came. But I could do it only because I was applying my mind. I had delimited my boundaries. And I knew exactly what I was doing. If I had just given in to the threat and to the perception, threat perception that I had received from my subordinates, I would have probably not ventured into the encounter, both from both me and my men. I would have said, avoid karo, jab hoga to dekha jayega. I could save the situation and I could uh, win my points in the encounter. So good. So, do you think that people who really follow the path of truth and fearlessness, at some point of time, they turn out to be lonely individuals? Have you experienced something like that at any point? I don't know. I can talk about myself. Yes, I was low-keyed. I wouldn't like to talk a lot about it. So, this book comes in after eight years of my retirement. And that too, because of COVID, people would have never heard of all these incidents if COVID had not been there, because two years I was locked in. So I decided to pen down things. I had nothing else to do. If COVID had not been there, these stories and incidents would not have come out. People only who had been associated with these incidents would have known about it. And these incidents would have been lost to posterity. 
Right, that's true. Um, another question is like you've had so many political narrations in the book. How would you inspire these young students sitting in front of you to go through each one of them? Well, these incidents will not be repeated verbatim in anyone's life. These are typical and to the uh, to the life of a policeman. And even another policeman will not see the same incident again. But they are basic principles in life. The principles are, as she said, truth and fearlessness. Yes. You, everyone faces his problem. The best thing is to stand in a situation, think for a while. A line has to be drawn which I call Mariyada in Hindi, the Lakshman Rekha. Whether you are in X situation or Y situation, whether you are a teacher, a student or an engineer or a doctor, whatever profession that you are in, you, every moment you are in a Mariyada, within the limits of a Mariyada, if you have the brains, you can extend the boundaries because those boundaries cannot in any situ in any circumstance be broken because if you break the boundaries you have committed a crime so don't break the boundaries but if you can through your brains expand the boundary so that the so that the arena in which you can play can be extended, then you have created an increment in your maneuverability. You will have more space to maneuver and you can decide, you can have more chance of winning the battle. But if you sit quiet, don't apply your brains, the boundary will constrict you and finally shrivel you and throttle you to death. Use your brains to expand the boundary and create more maneuverability. I think I'm making some sense if you can apply it to your situation. Right. I mean, like, uh, use your brain in the sense that be able to find, uh, differentiate between the right from the wrong and... More than that, like, more yeah. than that. I would give you an example in my situation because my examples will be from my situation. There is a section called 107 CRPC, which is almost taken to be dead and gone. Nobody who is using it thinks it is a powerful tool. And in N situations throughout my life, I have used it as a powerful tool, as a district SP, as a DGP, as an ADG for the whole state. And people said, Are, aise bhi use ho sakta hai. The DMs and the SDMs who apply it, here to the police officers apply 107, they give orders on 107. They feel that it's a dumb section. But I have used it to handle critical situations right at the spot. And people who found me using it, people who were my, my colleagues in that situation, because I didn't have the pass, the pass were with the SDMs and the district magistrate. And they said, Are, I say, who are you to useful, hai, both useful. Hai. So that is what I am saying. This is 107. I have used 110 CRPC. Never used. Last 40 years, there is, it has not been used at all. There, lots of people have forgotten about it. It's still there on the law books. And I have used it in very critical situations where it is a touch and go affair. And I use 110. People, are you aise, aap kaise use kar liye isko? It's because I have my visualization. I know what 110 means. I know I can extend this Lakshman Rekha of 110. And I can use it and good, put it to any test with the judiciary. And go and challenge it and it will be upheld. And that's because I have used my brains. So never feel that you are being constricted by law. Law is there to be in. After all, think it th th this way. You Think of a defense lawyer. What does he do? Every night he sits at 9 o'clock and he'll study till 1 in the night 
and prepare from the same law book the ipc the crpc the evidence act same law book he'll use to defend his client and we don't read those law books again and again as a policeman you also do the same thing if you have to solve a physics problem you have learnt your newton's laws of motion once you won't read it again if you read it again you will might get a new idea why not that's an interesting answer so you've made a mention of dost ji the biggest guru of your life he wrote a beautiful line and i loved it it says great are these men who light the candle of education in families could you please share with us the influence of dost ji in your life and can you also tell us how people like him can also turn out to be a big influence in the society he is a person who held my hand for the first time and made me write ka on the slate ka on the slate so the man who introduced me to letters in life i respect him more than i respected my father he taught me every day till not only me we are we were six brothers and sisters every one of them stayed with us of course he worked as a school teacher so he did his job and stayed with us he helped us with every bit of life and he is dead and gone but the respect that i have him, i have for him is phenomenal that's why i devoted about one and a half pages to him in my book absolutely so i mean like do you still feel that there are people who in the society who can be reflections of those ji very few very few correct log aksar apni kitabein jab likhte hain sir wo uh, kitabon ko dedicate karte hain unke family members ke liye wife ke liye bachon ke ya parents ke influence se ya uh, apne teachers ke influence se maine dekha hai is kitab ki khasiyat ye hai ki aapne ise constables ke liye samarpit kiya hai yes there is a fact which i would like to mention uh my father himself was in the indian police service he was 1951 batch i was 1977 batch he retired as the 20th dgp of bihar and i retired as the 40th dgp of bihar but uh, and from these facts you can figure out my first memory in life is the big palatial house of the sp of a district now in jharkhand called west singbhum chai basa big house big building constables all round and my childhood was spent in the laps of the constable i would have their food i would sit in their barrack i would climb onto their shoulders i would even scratch their head if they take me to a school to so, that was my memory of constabulary so what the feelings that i had for my constables in bihar police is huge nobody could hurt them as long as i was there nobody could hurt them unnecessarily that was why i dedicated my book to the constables of bihar police it's truly a humbling act because many a times it so happens that people like these those g or these constables that sir is talking about do come into our lives but somewhere in the full force run i think we tend to forget them or maybe you know like overlook their contributions yes people do but i am perhaps one of the very rare people maybe all over the country a uh, dgp father and a dgp son is an absolute rarity there is one example in bihar but uh, the person the father was pre independence dgp i mean there is 
they would be called IGPs then. And then his son also became an IGP. But then independence, post-independence, uh, I still have to come across another one. I'm sure there must be a couple, yeah. but I don't know. So, chances are that uh, you tend to forget the rank, the difference in rank between a constable and a DGP is too big. In fact, I remember uh, as a DGP between the period 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., my room used to be an open thing. You can come walk in and talk. And even the constables were allowed, the constables who would be positioned thousand miles away from my police headquarters, they'll come haggard, look, topi bhi thik nahi hai, baal bhi bada hua hai. <laughs> and the other DGP would have just maybe said, jaiye, thik se dressed ho kar ke aiye. I would say, haan, bataiye, bataiye, kya problem. How can you expect a constable who doesn't get his way with all and who's traveling thousand miles to come and meet you, have a grievance against the police department and he feels that DGP can rectify my grievance. Why should he be pulled up? I would give him a chair and say, Bad jai bataiye kya problem. And if there is a problem, serious one, I'll call the clerk of that department and say, listen to him right in my presence and tell me what is the solution while I keep doing my job. And I would have a screen right in front in my room. The SPs were asked 4 to 5 p.m. be there because anyone who has a problem from your district, I'll make him turn around, make him talk to you and while I'm sitting behind him. So the SP knows the DGP is sitting behind the person who has a grievance. So he better answer his problems properly. That was my style of doing things. Beautiful. Sir, your love for physics is deeply embedded. Aapne, uh, kahi aapko laga ki, uh, through your journey, did you lose that love for physics somewhere in between when you left it after your basic graduation and then moved on to the law department? Not even for a moment. Very good. Not even for a moment. Okay. So Because it was so embedded and ingrained that it was a part of me. When I see something happening, I immediately say, Achha, kaun sa physics ka principle lag raha hai? That's true. That's so good. Now the next question is like, you, your love of physics has actually helped you in your, I think, the post-retirement life when you deal with the super 30 children. Have, uh, would you like to enlighten the students about the super it? 30 yeah, people. super 30 children. Mm -hmm. I help my children to understand physics and maths and everyone can understand that. These children, both of them, my daughter and my son, they both passed out from IIT my daughter from Rurki and my son from Delhi. And they've gone into life, way ahead. So after they went to the colleges, Rurki and Delhi, I decided to help the poor children who were talented. By poor, I mean who, were, who did not have enough money to pay for the coaching institutes and who were talented to get into IIT, clear JET and JE and get into IIT. This I started in the year 2003. The first results came in 2003. And then there's been a long journey, 20 years now, 2003 to 2022. It's 20 years, a lot of experience. People joined in, people left. But as they say, karma chalta gaya, it still goes on. The concept is too good, it can't be decimated. Sir, regarding the Super 30, I would just like to ask you, the students who come to you are filtered through a difficult level of processing, I believe, different steps and Process, uh, processing is there, but uh, whether I'll use the word difficult or not, but 
is the first level they have physics uh, there is no maths or uh, there is no physics or chemistry question is all iq 10th level elementary level of mathematics mostly geometry and a second level then a third level is about three questions in geometry and five hours six hours whatever time you want to take solve these three questions the level will be 10th 10th and below if you clear that even if you don't answer those questions if you answer my question on those questions what i am looking for is not how much of knowledge you have but aap mein kshamta kitni hai to discuss even if you can't answer the question can you think on those questions and if you think differently even if you think wrongly i am happy because if you have a mind of your own then i can plant ideas into those minds i am not interested in how much knowledge you have absolutely i think it's been so good talking to him uh i see a lot of youngsters over here i if you have any of the questions from the series that we had i would give you a chance another 5 minutes for all of you आप ही बता दीजिए लोक का अर्थ क्या होता है आंसर मिल गया बहुत खूब एनीबडी एल्स कोई मदद नहीं करेगा अगर आप वो काम नहीं करेंगे ना आप कहने पर गलत काम कर दीजिए उसके बाद आप अगर फंस गए बुरी तरह तो जिनके लिए आपने किया था जिनके कहने पर किया था वो आपके बगल में भी नहीं खड़े होंगे I think this is a very harsh reality of life. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, actually, ये period में इस समय में सर सर अपने बारे में पहले सोचते हैं means अपने जरूरतों को तो पहले रखते हैं instead of society. लेकिन सर आप जैसे वो आपने super tricky कि organized तो तरीके से तो सर आपका ऐसा क्या मानना है कि society के लिए हम बहुत करेंगे तो ही जो हम inner satisfied inner peace achieve कर सकते हैं ना कि नहीं मैंने दूसरों के लिए अगर उनको फायदा हो गया इट इज इंसिडेंटल लेकिन हमने किया अपने लिए हमको सेटिस्फैक्शन मिलता था मेरे पास टाइम बहुत था अगर हमको सरकार उस पीरियड में जो 15 इयर्स का पीरियड था अगर टाइम हमको सरकार नहीं देती तो मे बी आई वुड बी वुडेंट है डू इट बट आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल टू दी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ दैट टाइम जिसने मुझे बहुत टाइम दे दिया दो तीन घंटे ऑफिस में काम रहता था उसके बाद हम पढ़ाते रहते थे और सरकार का भी काम नहीं बिगड़ता था तो इट इज इट वॉज फॉर माई सेटिस्फैक्शन इंसिडेंटली इट हेल्प देम सो ऑन दैट नोट आई वुड लाइक टू वाइंड अप विद द लास्ट क्वेश्चन माई क्वेश्चन इज सर दिस टाइटल अनबाउंडेड वॉज ट्रू इन योर केस बिकॉज यू वे नॉट बाउंड बाई एनी रूल्स फॉर स्पेशली taking the side of uh, walking on the path of truth and fearlessness how can we as general public be also unbounded in your own terms i don't think there is a problem if you can move ahead without i would say the gita applies without uh, ex- without expecting anything in return i didn't expect anything in return from anybody even today there is a lot of pressure on me because i keep writing on my facebook and there are followers and things like that they say aapko politics join karna chahiye i said no thank you i'm not interested because i don't expect that in return i never did this to get a vote from anybody 
And I can go back and say, yes, I did this for you. When I was the district SP of your place, I did all this. So I tell myself, if I am there as a citizen of that district, as a resident of that district, then I say, but you got your salary for that. You got your privileges for that. So there was nothing big and great that you did for us. Yes, that's a very valid argument. So don't expect anything in return and you are fine. It's only when you talk in terms of give and take that these problems keep coming up. A politician who is in power, he goes during elections and says, Dekhye, maine aapke liye ye kiya. To aap mujhe ab vote de dihye. To phir question hoga ki aapne jo kiya, wo vote leke kiya. So then what did you do? Quits. You got votes, you did work. So quits. I go to a hotel and I ask for food. The hotel wala gives me food. I feel very happy about it. But I pay for it. So what's so big and great about it? The relationship doesn't exist till eternity. Absolutely. It was such an interesting session talking to you, sir, especially uh, when I met you in the guest room. I mean, like, I saw that uh, you gave me that example of the folded hands of the yeah. politician. Can you just explain it to the audience here? That was very interesting, actually. The vote-seeking process is through folded hands. Yeah. And I've always rankled over it. When you fold your hands during an election process, हिंदी के दो शब्द हैं क्या ये अभिवादन है क्या ये याचना है और आंसर इसका बहुत क्लियर मिलना चाहिए आप सिटीजन हैं आपकी तरफ से इस क्वेश्चन का आंसर आपको अपने आप यू क्वेश्चन योर सेल्फ एंड आंसर योर सेल्फ आप यू आस्क हिम यू आस्क योर सेल्फ ये जो आदमी हैंड फोल्डिंग कर रहा है ये हमारा अभिवादन कर रहा है या हमसे याचना कर रहा है 